Now there's a lot. There is a lot going on in this gospel. In fact, the way I look at this gospel, this is the entire Bible in one story. The entire scriptures are now taken and pulled together into one story. And in this story, we hear exactly what God does all the time and how we react and what we are called to be. So let's listen just a second to the lessons that come from this story that are actually lessons of the entire Bible. First lesson, Jesus shows up. And a lot of times Jesus shows up where we least expect him. Jesus shows up in places that are not just here within these walls, but out there in the world, out there on the streets, in school, at work, with people that we don't expect to meet Christ in. We encounter Jesus all the time. Every day we encounter Jesus. Sometimes we encounter Jesus in our children who go walking down that aisle for the first time down to children's liturgy of the word. Sometimes we encounter him in our children when they're old enough now to stay here and sit with us as we listen to God's word and hear the scriptures. Sometimes we find in our child the first time he serves at a big Sunday mass. Christ shows up in all sorts of ways at all sorts of times. And that's our first lesson. God is with us always, in every situation. I realized that a couple of weeks ago, right after the bombing that took place in Sri Lanka, there was a Muslim imam who offered the bishop his mosque to replace the church that had been bombed so that the people would have a place to come and pray. God shows up. God shows up. The second lesson we don't always recognize him. In fact, I would bet 99% of the time we walk on by and Christ is right there on the bus, out on the street, here at Mass. A lot of times we don't recognize Jesus, just like the apostles. We're blinded. Maybe a little cynical, maybe a little busy, but we don't recognize that Jesus is with us, even though he is. That God sends his son to us all the time and nudges us and pushes us. But our lives are so crowded that sometimes we just don't recognize him. The third lesson, when we do, when we do recognize Jesus, he calls us to fellowship. He calls us to come to the table, to receive his very presence in the Eucharist, to hear his word, to experience community with each other. A little bread, a little fish, in this case, a little bread, a little wine, his body, and his blood. We're called to fellowship. And sometimes that fellowship spills over. At St. Rita's today, they're heading up to Nativity House at noon to cook food for the people at Nativity House. They're sharing fellowship that spills out into the world. We're called to the same thing. We're called to receive fellowship here downstairs at social hour, and out in our families, among our co-workers, the kids at our school, we're called to find fellowship with Christ. Fourth lesson, sometimes we carry burdens in our hearts. Sometimes we've offended. Sometimes we've caused an alienation with each other and with God. And so God calls us back to right relationship. When he asked Peter three times, do you love me? He was trying to cancel out the three times that Peter denied him. The three times that Peter denied him. And if you remember, it was around a charcoal fire in the courtyard of the high priest. Well, today, it's in the courtyard of God's kingdom. And it's a little charcoal fire with some bread and fish. Do you love me? And in those three times, the sins are wiped away. Now here at Mass, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, how many times? Three times. Three times. Three times. And at the, right before communion, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world? Three Amen. times. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us, grant us peace. 
It's as if God is saying, get rid of those things that block you from having a good relationship with each other and with me. That's a fourth lesson right there. We need to be reconciled. Now, a fifth lesson. A fifth lesson is this, that it's not enough to love God if we don't love our neighbor. We're called to love each other unconditionally. That's why Jesus says, tend my sheep, feed my lambs. He tells us to take care of each other, to reach out no matter what age, young or old. In fact, sometimes our youngest people are, are the ones who do the most in taking care of us, allowing us to laugh a little bit and to realize that life isn't so serious as sometimes we take it. We're called to tend to God's children and to recognize that we're all God's children, young, old, of all races, of all genders, of all dispositions in life, of all faith traditions, we are God's children, and we're called to tend to each other. It's a lesson that I'm trying to learn next week as we go on a pilgrimage. I don't know how many of you have heard about this, but there's a pilgrimage from all over the Archdiocese of Seattle down to the Tide Flats, to the detention center. And Bishop Eusebio is going to lead Mass for all the people involved in this situation of immigration on all sides to share communion and to realize that we're all God's children. And no matter what ends up happening, we should be in communion with each other and with God. We're called to go forth and serve God as best we can. And if you remember a couple weeks ago, Father talked about the beautiful architecture of St. Patrick's, the 12 vaults that we have in here that represent our apostolic roots, the 13th vault, which calls us to Christ. He talked about our beautiful stained glass window, the rose window, that reminds us of the beauty of creation. But he forgot probably the most important sign of all in our church, the exit sign. The exit sign reminds us that we are called to go forth glorifying God by the way we live our lives. Tend my lambs, feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Those commandments that God gives us are commandments to go forth out into the world. One more lesson, the sixth lesson. Sometimes that's going to lead us where we don't want to go. Jesus told Peter, there's going to come a time where people will lead you in a way that is going to be harsh, unfortunately very difficult and dangerous. And we heard today an inkling of that when they were in front of the Sanhedrin defending themselves for proclaiming the gospel. And that was mild compared to what happened to Peter Peter ends up on a cross upside down in Rome, bleeding out his life and his love right there. Sometimes we're going to be led to very difficult and even dangerous places because God is calling us. He's guiding us, but he's never going to abandon us because we go back to the first lesson, God always shows up. God shows up. God is with us always. It's only after those six lessons that we hear at the very end of the gospel, Jesus say these words, follow me, follow me. The entire Bible, the entire scripture is a series of lessons on how to encounter Christ, how to recognize him, how to reconcile with him, how to love him fully, by loving each other, no matter how difficult life becomes. It's the entirety of the Bible that we hear in this one story. We come here today to this very holy place, a little glimpse of what John was talking about in the book of Revelation. We come here to this place, the Lamb who was slain and the one who sits on the throne worthy of honor and glory, blessing and might. We come here not just to worship, but to be formed into the people God calls us to be, children of the Father, children of God, children sent forth into the world to make a difference. 
May God bless us on that journey, that journey that takes us from recognizing to following, from encountering to serving. Amen?